Okay, so in the first section, we will be covering the setup of the app, which includes setting up the UI, the manifest, and the Gradle, with the second section covering the actual Kotlin code. So, okay, so first we're going to cover our, sort out our Gradle files. So we open up our Gradle scripts, go into the build.gradle module app, and then we sort out our dependencies. So the dependencies that we will need are the Anko common dependency, this one here, as well as we are going to be using a serial library that I will have linked in the description below. The reason why we're going to be using a external library is because it makes the integration of serial but just a lot easier to do. So it, it basically essentially just streamlines a lot of the processes we have to do. So the one I'll be using is by Fell HR85 and the name of it is USB serial. Again I'll have a link to it in the description. So once we've got that we will then just need to sync the project. let the project sync so let's see why that's failed so i've missed one bit of one line of code inside of the project gradle and that's for the maven repository so we need to get the maven repository and stick it inside repositories all projects under j center just like that save and if we resync it It should clear the er error. There we go. That's cleared the error. So yeah, as a quick tip, make sh make sure you're constantly reading any documentation to make sure you're actually using the libraries correctly. So now we've got the Gradle files sorted out. Now I'm going to set up the manifest. So what we need to do in the manifest is make sure that our that we have don't have to that we've dealt with any single kind of permission, as well as also setting up our our UI's settings. So the only thing I really would want to do is just make sure that our app is in portrait mode. So the way that to do that is in the activity tag here we do is just simply new line and then type in android screen orientation set it to portrait just save that and then that's all we're going to do with the manifest so next up we're now going to sort out the xml which is the ui of the app and what the and what we're going to do is because we're only going to be controlling a LED light on an Arduino, all we need to do is have an on button and an off button, as well as we also need a connect and a disconnect. So we're actually to open a serial connection. So let's get rid of this text view. And we want a button, a wrap content, wrap content. And we want to set the constraints because we're using a constraint layout. Constraint right to the right of parent. Constraint left to the left of parent. And we're also going to set the top straight to the top of parent and we're going to leave bottom because we will need to be filling out the rest of our bits so next we're going to set up the text to be on now as you can see it's actually highlighted that line and that's because that's a compiler warning so what we're going to do 
And the reason why it says that is because it's hard-coded string. Now, in general, Android Studio doesn't like uh, hard-coded strings, and and the, the norm is to kind of avoid that by using the strings directory. But it can be quite annoying to constantly go to the strings directory and come back so an easy way of doing it is to click on the text, wait for this little light bulb to come up, click it, and extract the string resource. So you name the resource, what the string is, and you click OK. And then that will stick that into the strings file inside of values. So we can have a look at that. And there it is. Just saves you a few seconds of time, that overtime of an entire build of an app. And add up. So we're going to add our last, the rest of our buttons. We're going to set the rest of the constraints. So we're going to constrain the top to the bottom of ID slash on. So we need to set the ID on this button. Android ID equals app plus ID slash on. And again, save time. Just copy and paste it. Making sure to rename them after you've done. Because you're not allowed to use multiple IDs. So this will be the disconnect. Disconnect. This will be the connect, and this one will be off. And we're also going to copy and paste the constraints so that they're all in line with what we need, yeah, uh, so that they're all laid out the way we want them. So that'll be to off, and that'll be to on, not on connect. Okay, and then the last thing we have to do is just change the string. So using the same technique that I used to set the on. Just rename them all. Oops. There we go. And extract the string resource. There we go. Uh, if the light bulb doesn't show up the first time, just make sure yeah, you're, you've actually clicked on the text. And there we go. And then you can see right up here, there's a tick, which means that it works, that there are no more compiler warnings. The reason why it's got a squiggly underline is because there are typos. However, that's to do with my package name because obviously it doesn't like the way I've used that. So if I took that away, it'd get rid of the squiggly underline, but then it would actually give me a compiler error. So that is basically the setup of the app done. So the next thing we're going to be doing is the fun bit, which is the code. So we'll see you in the next one.